Anybody new here? How you doing, brother? Good to have you. Welcome to Arizona Deliverance Center. How you doing, sis? I, I always notice the new faces, so I, but I, I'd rather that you conf confess to us that you're new. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass you. So praise God on behalf of Brother Mike, Hardcore Christianity. Welcome to Arizona Deliverance Center. It's Friday night. Brother Rick Katz going to preach tonight. He's going to preach the house down because God is powerful through him. Amen. Through him, right? Through him. The Holy Ghost is powerful. He's going to preach a word, especially for all of us tonight. Amen. And if, and if you feel it's not for you, then you're going to go ahead and preach it to, your, to who you feel like it's for, right? So just for a few um, just announcements tonight, we're, we want to promote some books we have in the bookstore. Um, we want to make sure that everybody gets a hold of Brother Mike's Planos Spirit book for the mentally ill. If you know anyone that you want to understand men mental illness and the root of mental illness, Brother Mike has an awesome, it's a booklet actually, the booklet. And Christ the Healer, he has another booklet on why certain um, sicknesses and diseases don't get healed. So you have the one that are natural and you have the supernatural uh, diseases like the AIs, the, um, the ones that are, what is it, autoimmune diseases. Yeah, fibromyalgia, all those autoimmune diseases, that's demonic, that's spiritual. All right, so <clears throat> get a hold of those books. We have um, Sister Vivian's book on sale, Revival in the Pews. Um, we have Pastor Francis' book. Uh, what's his book called? Is it uh, Healing is the Children's, children's Bread? Um, just make sure you stop by and see Lori when she, you know, just say hi and check out the books in there, okay? Lots of great information. We know we, we uh, go by the word of God. A lot of the, the, the books, they're, they're scripture-based, amen? So, also, we want to make an announcement for the healing rooms tomorrow. If anyone is, is in need of healing or deliverance and you want a one-on-one -on -one with the hardcore team, we'll be here tomorrow from 9.30 to 3 o'clock, okay? So make sure if you have anyone that wants to be ministered to, uh, we're accepting the walk-ins. The walk-ins come in. Uh, we just make sure we have you signed up, and we take you back, and we pray for you, okay? So it works. It God's awesome, man. He's just been, like, moving through these healing rooms. He's, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's one-on-one. -on -one. He just moves the way he wants to move in these rooms. So we're, 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 like, in awe. Just the team is in awe because it's, like, wow, it was awesome on Saturday. You know, we just, like, love how he does things. Amen? So just... Have an expectant heart. If you're coming tomorrow, make sure if you're bringing somebody, just let them know, hey, you know, we want you want some prayer. You want, you, maybe you're not able to come here on Friday or Thursday night. Saturday tomorrow is your opportunity from 9.30 to 3. 9.30 to 3? Or is it 9.30 to 3.30? 9 to 3. All right. All right. Last announcement, guys. We have children's deliverance. It was off the chain last week. Oh, my God. I was, again, another awe moment of God. It was amazing. And it was just me, Kelly, and Lori. And, oh, my, like, God just moved, like, like no other, man. And you just have to experience it yourself. I'm, like, in the middle of it. And I'm, like, oh, my God, look at God, you're moving. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, when you could just, like, stand back and just watch him do it, you know. So, praise God, the next children's deliverance is next month, the first Saturday of every month for the summer. Just make sure if you have your kids, make sure you get permission uh, from the parent or guardian. If you have a child in mind that you want to bring, make sure you have permission from the guardian or parent. It's best that you come with them, but it's um, toddlers to preteens. And uh, just uh, from it's, it's starting at 10 o'clock. And we, we, try to, we try to keep it to a minimum, 10 to 12, just because, you know, kids get tired, they get hungry. But, um, but if the Holy Ghost takes us further, then, hey, let's, ha let's let him have his way. Amen? So, uh, everybody understand? Am I going too fast? <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, I need everybody in agreement tonight. Everyone's a Christian tonight, right? Everyone's saved. You love Jesus. I want everybody to agree with me tonight in the name of Jesus. We bind every spirit. We bind every power of darkness, every hindering spirit 
that would try and hinder the word of God. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lose your truth. We lose the anointing for deliverance and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give God praise. All right, Brother Rick. Let me double check this. Testing. All right, there we go. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that word uh, that, that Saturday is an incredible, an incredible time. It's similar to how God does it in the jails. I don't have a lot of time in the jails. See, I come here on Tuesdays, half the time's listening to your story. Uh, a third of the time is then how to interrupt you from talking about yourself so we can get down to business and get them demons out. Then we spend the last time just casting out demons. But on Saturday, it was 10% you talking, 90% the Holy Ghost just blasting out demons. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's how God does it in the jails. And I, I'm, I'm able to cut them short because I said, well, sir, I can't listen to your whole story. Because then they could subpoena me uh, and, and I'd have to show up for court. We keep it short. We just get down to business. And that's what I want to do tonight. And I want to share these three things that are the major hindrances to you finishing your deliverance. Tons of people get started in the deliverance. They just don't finish the deliverance. When you finish the deliverance, something incredible comes out of you. What comes out of you? God comes out of you. Supernatural Holy Spirit power comes out of you. But if you look at most Christians, the supernatural Holy Ghost power does not come out of them. Some good biblical teaching comes out of them at times. They, they can reiterate the word. They can... They can share on things that have happened to them and testify, and people can get saved. But look, we're going into some dark times. This thing's getting darker. Whenever the world is singing, oh, it's getting great, the economy's booming, the jobless rate is down, all these things are wonderful, we're going to have peace with the North, North Korea, South Korea, we're going to do all the it, sudden destruction is coming. That devil's moving. We're, we're dealing with a narcissistic generation, narcissistic Christians. It's all about, I'm telling you, it's all about them. That's what we do in the business of counseling. It's all about them. Who offended you? Who let you down? Who disappointed you? What minister didn't help you and bring you through to your fulfillment of your ministry? And no one wants to take any responsibility for themselves. When God's ministering to you, he teaches you his attributes. The Bible says God is a man of war. You're going to have to have a little godlike character to finish your deliverance. You're going to have to not love this world nor the things in the world because one day God's going to prepare you. They're going to take your stuff. <laughs> oh, nation's been taking citizen stuff forever. If it ain't good enough that you live in California and make over 200 grand, they already take half your stuff. They're, they're, they're slowly taking it, but there's one time they're just going to take it all. And the whole YouTube theory of FEMA camps and maybe they're jumping the gun, but one day it's going to be real. There's going to be a lot of broken-hearted Christians wondering where their Jesus culture CD is to put in their ears and pump them up. Right? Got nothing wrong with Jesus culture. It's great. But this feel me, Jesus, I just need to feel Jesus. I just need to feel him because you're always wounded and broken. You ain't worshiping God. That worship is coming into you so it can give you a little bit of life. You don't know how to give back worship to God. And that's your service to God. That's your love. That's your obeyment, obeying his word. Oh, obey? Oh, Christians don't like to hear that. Give me, Joel. Give me Joel. Come on, your smile's not even nice. Your teeth are crooked. His are perfect. Come on. This, this devil's too smart. You ain't outsmarting him unless you obey the word of God. He's, he's ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times smarter than you are. 
He's wiped out your family. You better look down the family tree and think you're smarter than, than the devil. You are deceived. That devil's playing with the majority of the world as tools against you to deceive you, to bring you to the depths of hell because he hates your guts because he's going to hell and he's already been cast out of heaven. He knows what heaven's like and he don't want you there forever. If there's any chance he can get to take you down, he's willing to spend some time with you. In Psalms 56, 9, it says, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. Before I got here, I had to cry out to God. Smoking weed every day and not wanting to smoke weed. I've been preaching the word. I've been delivered for 10 years. What am I doing? The devil had me. He put his hooks in me. And I, and I was unaware of the schemes of the devil because the doctrines and the teaching of men made the word of God of no effect. And when it talked about deliverance, I kept looking back to the time when I was first saved, thinking, oh, he's already delivered me. No, he put me back into bondage because I went back to sin. And I used to pray every night, Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want this. This is only temporary four hours of just talking about the days of the old, glorifying the back in the days of the things I used to do. That can only bring me so much joy. I, I know what your joy is like. I know what your peace is like. I'm, I'm going through the motions. I need your help. And I said, nah, this can't be it. This guy on 10, 10 a.m., come on, man. This, I'm into charismatic, powerful teachers, you know, guys that can rock the house. that got a huge congregation to prove their worth to God. Some simple guy on a, on a, on a little uh, computer making, a, making an a.m. radio show. And then I got down to the house of healing, and it was about this big. <laughs> And I started going through Bible verses. My, my God owns a cat on a thousand hills. He'd come up with a better building than this one for you if you were really doing what no one else could do. Oh, shoot, I went to a mega church in Scottsdale. We had, you wanted to go listen to contemporary music? We had a huge church for you, and then we'll play the video of the preacher. You want to go in and listen to the old, old style classical gospel worship? We got the main sanctuary. You are a family guy. You want to only worship with your family? We'll give you your own table in the third auditorium. <laughs> you got this little building, and you're doing something they can't do? See, I, I'm fully convinced. And it's sad and it's hard to say, but I, I, I'm convinced that the Bible is 100% true when it says there's only a few that get saved. I believe God does everything possible for you. You don't understand. I, I, I'm in the trenches of guys that were, hey, I'm a sex offender. Uh, I was molesting kids and I got saved in prison and I served him for nine years and I was doing great. I had a job. I got a house. I was all this favor happened to me, and then I noticed my neighbor was able to work on his car like 15 hours a day. And I said, hey, man, you tweaking? The guy goes, why does it show? <laughs> Next thing you know, I got a neighbor that's got my hookup. And now I got another charge for filing another kid. A born-again, blood-bought child of the living God. You couldn't tell me the guy wasn't saved. He had godly sorrow. He had remorse. He was repentant. But this devil had put hooks on him, and nobody got him out. I never got the weed demons out of me. I trained my mind. You don't smoke weed. I, I, I was a knucklehead, but I was able to start taking a little bit of data. I could, didn't have a job, and I had quit a job that was very lucrative. I was a ticket scalper, but God told me, hey, I'm not there. If you want to follow me, you got to walk by faith. Well, I got no degree. I got 137 college credits, and I'm two years from any kind of degree, and so I don't know what to do. And I fall back into smoking weed, and I started writing down my daily activities. Next thing you know, I had a portfolio of doing nothing. I said, here's the case in point. I do nothing when I smoke weed. I got to stop doing this. So it came with a conscious decision that I was going to go nowhere, and God sent me an anointed televangelist. This guy, he never made it as a televangelist because he had an uh, off-the-hook anointing. I only seen him one time. And he called me to repentance, and I knelt down in my in the living room of my house, and the power of God came through. He never said nothing about drugs come out, weed demons come out. He said, Holy Ghost, come in. And when the Holy Ghost came in, he drove out devils. See, most people, you, you, you just keep sucking up all these devils because you love the world. Christian narcissist. Have you seen 
Tell you the truth, I wasn't delivered from lust demons when I went to this Scottsdale church either. And part of the deal I liked going over there was all the beautiful women and how they dressed provocatively at church. I didn't go to nightclubs anymore, so church was where I got a little flesh. It's a sin-stained world. You got to get those hooks out of you. I still see it. It's okay. Hey, somebody's blessed. I've understood how the devil tries to diminish everything God gave me. And I got to I gotta fight for what God's given me. I don't, I, I'm not to compare what I got to the world. Man, matter of fact, this body's getting old. I spent time trimming ear hair, not in my ear, but on my ear, in case it showed up on YouTube. I said, I don't know if we got those high-definition cameras. This body's getting bad. I said that I stunk. The last time, because I didn't want to uh, wear deodorant, I got two uh, suggestions. One guy sent me a picture of some natural deodorant to help me. Another lady told me to start bathing in essential oils. <laughs> this thing goes both ways. I just, I'm transparent about my failures, and I get help from the brothers and sisters. The hooks of the devil are real. I never got those weed demons out. I coach myself. Don't do it. I coach myself. Don't even talk to girls. Don't, don't even intrigue it. Just, hey, if you smile, whatever, don't, don't engage in any conversations. I couldn't even minister to women because I didn't trust myself. And then God was challenging me, and, and he was testing me. This was early on, and there was a girl. She was a very beautiful girl, but she was lost as all get out. And I'm so in, Hot dogs at this time. God truly humbled me. I'm not preaching something I didn't walk through. I went from my friends being millionaires, making two, three, four hundred thousand a year, to me selling hot dogs for thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars a year, and it's hard work in the heat. And there was a psychic convention, and I said, "Well, why are you going over there?" And she goes, "Oh, we need answers. My little sister died at twelve. We need answers. We want to know why God took her." And man, the Holy Ghost just sprung out of me. To, to help this woman in her distress and her confusion and, and, and her total deception. And she looked with complete amazement with what came out of me, and I realized that wasn't me. That was the Holy Ghost. He jumped all over this lady, and she walked the other way and went home with her answer from a hot dog cart. And I, I realized real fast that I, I'm going to have to get rid of these, get rid of this stuff, if I'm going to be able to minister. And so what I did was I just coached myself. And at ball games, everyone's drinking, and you get drunk. What you really are like comes out. And girls that drink alcohol and dress provocatively, it's out everywhere. Well, I'm selling water and peanuts outside the ballpark dealing with all this, and I just had to train myself. Don't look down. Don't turn. Don't look at that. Just train yourself. And I co that's all I was was a Christian coach of a bunch of spirits that were inside me. Don't look at internet porn. Don't you dare do it. I didn't even know. I tried to log on to it one time. It was back when it was dial-up. I got to about halfway <laughs> and do the slow process of the dial-up. My conscience finally kicked in, and I said, I don't want anything to do with it. I said, I'm not doing this. See, God, he knows what you're like. He knows your... He knows your your, your, your shortcomings, and he set you right in that right time frame. If it would have been high-speed, 4K, Internet, I'd have been through. <laughs> I'd have been done. So finally, when I took some hard knocks, took some hard knocks. I mean, this devil was beating me at all angles, and I didn't understand. You come into those jails, and you're preaching the Word of God to people that he uses as his vessels. If anyone's been raped, I've seen them. Anybody's robbed stuff, I just look at AZ Central all the time, all the rest records, and those are all the people I see in the jail. Any type of sex crime, they're always in there. There's there on one floor, and I go to two or three of them, the different chapel services. And that's his trophy case, and you're going in there bringing the light, the good news of the gospel of Jesus. Oh, he loves religious people in there. Religious people are nuts, man. Dudes were telling dirty jokes in there, trying to relate to the inmates. And I would minister to them. They were, they were as lost as anybody sitting in that, in that white and black stripes. But you come in there with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that devil's going to, he's going to challenge you. See, most people don't realize you've never ran into the devil because you were on the broad road that leads to destruction. He was in the back of your ear whispering and guiding you down that road to destruction. Well, the minute you turn around, you're going to face him. 
You're going to find him face to face, and you're, you're going to go, what? I didn't know it was this hard. I didn't know this devil would actually oppose me. You want to go and preach some Mickey Mouse gospel? He's, he's, not, he's not afraid of that. You want to talk about getting people healed, delivered from demons, salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, the name that's above all names, and that God comes down and inhabits the praises of people, and you teach people actually how to praise God? Oh, man, he's going he's gonna to rush you. And he's going to come with everything he had on you before, and he knows you since you were little, and he's going to keep coming with those tricks, those deceptions. And the one thing guys hate, they hate people testing, testing them and not showing them any respect. That's the number one thing guys hate, and that's the thing I face always. And then he's going to, he's going to always tempt your, everybody has pride. It's, it's a self-defense mechanism to give you a place in this world. Without a place in this world, you don't have any friends, you don't have anything to do. It's a boring life, so you get this, this pride to fit you into this world. And I'm still facing things. Look, my, I, it just came to, a, to an end last Friday after service. And I started this halfway house, and this thing started bad and ended worse. It was bad. I can fill you in. So I didn't really know how it worked. I didn't know how to, hey, if you want to come, this is what I got going on. I'll pray you through to a job. I just wanted them down here at the deliverance center to try to get delivered. I just wanted access to these guys to try to help them. And really what it was was pride. Because after 17 years of doing prison ministry, all I got is a little ID badge that, badge that lets me get in there. I got nothing. I tell people about my ministry and, well, where's your fruits? I wanted something tangible to say, here's my fruits. Come meet these men. Look what they do for God. Look at this place. A little trophy case of, of my ministry. That's, that's basically what it was for. I prayed about it, but I never heard God say no, and I didn't hear him say yes, so I went ahead and did it anyway. And it looked like a good idea. Well, three of them went back to prison. Uh, I don't know what happened. Oh, one guy made it through, but he came here to the deliverance center. He actually wasn't even from jail, so all of them went back to jail. The other two... <laughs> Only come here because they have to. I'm looking at he's not here today, the only one that's left. They wouldn't pay anything. I said, hey, just pay 50 bucks. This covers the a week. This covers the AC. This covers the electric. I'll pay the mortgage. You just pay the electricity. They couldn't even do that. So I show up last Friday wondering, hey, what's going on? I'm leaving in a great mood. A lot of people got delivered. It was a nice service last Friday. And I whip in the parking lot. And there's a plume of marijuana. I mean, it's not like you're just back taking three rips and trying to get to sleep. This dude smoked like a full bowl, a bong, a joint, the whole thing. The neighborhood smelled like weed. And I walk in, he's all defensive, and I look down on his phone, and he's watching porn. And I, and I, and I lose it. And I know the Holy Ghost tells me, just get out of here. This is going nowhere. But I got this also a little bit of greed in me. The guy promised me he was going to help paint this church that, that, that we got, and it's going to cost six dollars $7,000, and it's hard to get a contractor to come in there that has the scaffolding that can paint a big building, and he was going to do it if I rented the scaffolding and the, and the spray rig and all that. And my greed is saying, well, don't throw him out. You need him to paint this place. <laughs> I mean, you will face yourself. You will face yourself going through deliverance. And the reality is we got to change. Because you're going to keep getting yourself in these jams again and again and again. And ultimately, you know, the guy had to leave. I tried to leave a seed of opportunity to see him get delivered one day. And uh, I said, hey, just forget all the debt. You don't owe me nothing. See you later. Unfortunately, I'll probably see him back in jail, most likely. That, that's, that's definitely where he's headed. He couldn't pay me any money, but yet he got a medical marijuana card, 150 bucks. He had to have a doctor sign the script. That's another 150 bucks. And uh, yeah. it's tough. It's tough. If you're not called to do something, you're, you're not going to make it. You got to do what you're called to do. And most people get out there and you start trying to try on some ministry. And you haven't deliver, got delivered yourself. How are you going to deliver anybody else? It doesn't work that way. you got to remove the plank that is in your own eye so you can see clearly how to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. Amen. I had a guy in here two weeks ago for deliverance, and he had three ministries. And these demons were, they were, he had serious demons. 
And uh, they were growling and everything else, but he gets a great touch. I said, man, you got to be back here Friday. You've got to finish this deliverance. I don't see him again for months. He comes in. Now he's all messed up. His hips were all jacked up. And he went on a mission trip to somewhere like Alabama. And the minute the flight landed, he got off the plane. Something jumped into his hips, and he got this messed up hip. And I can't get any demons out of him. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? He goes, well, I've been backsliding to heroin. I keep going further and further. He did heroin that day. And he wanted deliverance. And he was trying to run three ministries. Come on. This devil, you're, you're, not, you're just fooling yourself. The devil's so smart. He'll let you run a little ministry for a year or so. I see guys come into jail all the time. They last about a year, a year and a half. And then he knocks the legs out from underneath them, and they never do ministry in them jails ever again. That's for sure. Other ministries, I don't know, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a defeated uh, a mechanism that he has to knock any future ministries out of you. You just get defeated. You get discouraged. You get distracted. You get overwhelmed. You get busy. You get broke. You take offenses from family members that are coming against you. So we got to go through this. This world's hard, man. You come in this world crying and you leave this world gasping for air. It's not easy. We got 20% increase in the suicide rate from 1999. It's just growing like this, people killing themselves. And it's rich people. Some lady that does handbags that went to ASU, she just killed herself, 50-some years old, multimillionaire, just hangs herself. Got everything that the world says is success. Kills herself. You got that, that guy, that Food Network guy. He just kills himself, just checks out. Yeah. He's been all over the world. He ate all the fine wo- you know, food. He had sex with all the fine women in the world. And he said, what else is there? Just kills himself at 61. This world is, is lost and is dying. And so God's looking for a remnant of people that will actually be his servants. Actually be a servant. So the title of my message are the three major distractions the devil uses to keep you from finishing your deliverance. And you come in here and you cough and you hack and you bark like a dog or whatever crazy manifestation goes down. That's the beginning. I was just talking with Ron. It is the beginning. It's like if you have a soda that's shaking a little bit and you crack the top and the fizz all comes out. Well, you got 70%. 80% of that soda still in that bottle. You just got the stuff that was just, you know, flooding out the top. You got to keep at this thing. You, I'll tell you right now, our ministry is disappointed is if you don't have enough deliverances, you can sit down with your children and sit down with your friends and sit down with God, people God's put in your way and cast devils out of them. Because it's not a sign of a pastor, preacher, teacher, evangelist, or the apostle. It is a sign of a believer that they shall cast out demons. So the battle belongs to God, and he's going to bring you through. But he wants you to fight, and then he's going to teach you how to fight. And uh, I see, it, man, I, I have a hard time watching too many people on YouTube. But, man, there's some guys that can really preach. That's a real preaching anointing. They are very articulate in explaining the gospel of Jesus Christ and getting people saved. And I, I, they always kind of, if you watch them enough, they'll kind of go negative towards deliverance. But they don't realize they look crazy. Like, they look crazy. Their facial expressions are crazy. That's not crazy for Jesus. I mean, that's how they try to play it off. Like, wow, look at his hunger and passion for Christ. That's a crazy look in your face. That's some kind of spirit you picked up. And anybody that's not in the Christian world, that you're not ushered into the presence of a large congregation under the influence of all kinds of people that, that had influence on you to say, listen to this good man of God. He knows the word. You go out on the street with a look like that on your face, and you're going to have a hard time winning people. you got to get that thing out of your head. You pick that up doing drugs. You, you pick that up hurting some people. You pick that up sinning somehow, and that thing's got to be cast out. So people get confused. When you get born again, I could do all kinds of good things. I led someone to Jesus after cussing out a bunch of people at the airport, and then I was too cheap to pay $40 to get on a cab because I was trying to fly on this, this uh, airline ticket that was kind of a scam, but you'd go on the red-eye flight, and most ladies would be sympathetic for you and let you on and say, well, you shouldn't be on here, but I'll let you go this time. Well, this happened to be a guy, so I let him have it. This stuff wouldn't fly. This is in the 90s. They'll tase you now. Don't try it. And 
Then I find out the cab's 50 bucks. I don't want to pay 50. I go down the line and see who'll do it for 20. And God just takes me over and I lead this guy to Jesus. And I'm walking up and, and I, I hear God saying, imagine what I could do in your life if you just die to yourself. If you just die to yourself. See, that's the problem. The major hurdle is, number one, people just want their, their old life back. But you don't realize how elementary your old life was. Yeah, you were going to church. You were able to pray. You didn't have these negative voices. You didn't think about killing yourself. You didn't think about psych meds. You didn't think about smoking weed and doing all these things. You didn't have a porn addiction. So it makes sense just to have that old life back, going to church and praising God and sharing Jesus with some of your coworkers. But that's not an option. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to leapfrog that old life and go on to this new man in Christ Jesus. That, that, that seems right to the natural man. It's, a, it's an easy stumbling block for the devil because when you begin to start deliverance, you realize that, hey, I, I got I to gotta forgive some people. And all of a sudden, there's some reconciliation. Hey, I got to forgive myself. You don't go around condemning yourself anymore. And all of a sudden, things start really happening. And then you get back into the church and you have joy and you're not that problem person that sits in the Bible study and everyone's worried about what you're going to let loose out of your mouth this week and <laughs> overwhelm the whole, the whole hour with your problems. You kind of long for encouraging other people and enjoying other people. It seems great, but look, that's, that you got to keep going. you got to keep going. I have seen ministry gifts come out of the most messed up looking people you've ever seen. This, not at your church, it ain't going to work. you got to be good looking. You go to Scottsdale especially, you ain't getting in unless you, you're really good looking. And if you're chubby and be below average, you got to have incredible oratorial skills. you gotta, you got to have some degrees now. you got to have some four or five degrees, and then you can get up there. So, look, but when it comes to the kingdom of God, uh, laying hands on the sick, making disciples, casting out demons, God's no respecter of persons. This is real, and I have seen it. And I've seen some real people, I said, ooh, this dude looks full psycho. See, that's one thing, that's one thing Mike and me need to change a little bit. We have descriptive terminologies that are not the most edifying, but it's the first thing that pops into my mind when I see certain people. And so I kind of go with it. And I've seen these people change, first by getting saved. And when you... Paul talked about it, something special. He said, look, you might have many instructors in the Lord. They talked about following Apollos and following Cephas. He goes, you might have many instructors in the Lord, but, but you do not have many fathers. He said, for I, you know, I, I, I founded you in the Lord Jesus. He led them to Jesus. There's something special about that because they'll listen to you. And uh, they'll listen to you above these other preachers. See, where I get into competition is where I'm coming in and a guy's already, already saved. And so now I'm trying to walk him through deliverance. But you get multiple services during the week, and now some guy's coming in with this five-point Calvinism. He's coming in with this doctrinal you know, garbage that is completely irrelevant when you're talking about sex offenders and murderers and rapists and bank robbers. And he's in there trying to teach them biblical soundness. Once you're saved, you're always saved, and you can't have a demon, and the gifts have all left with the apostles. It's, it's some crazy stuff. So when you, you get someone saved, those are the ones that I see really grow. And uh, I've seen guys that get people healed and delivered in there. I see guys lay hands on themselves and get, get healings. A guy literally, God is my witness, laid hands on his blind eye. I tried everything I could do to get the guy delivered. I couldn't get him uh, delivered and I couldn't get his eye uh, healed. And he, I said, just lay hands on yourself. The Bible says you'll lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. That includes yourself. You'll be good practice. And his eye got healed on a Wednesday. From Monday, two days later, his eye is healed. And he literally started a revival. Amen. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's the reality is there's some people you have to have discernment how much time you're going to spend with them. Just on Monday, I got a guy in there, and I had three spot-on words of knowledge. He's in a wheelchair. This dude looks 100. Told me he was 61. I looked at him. I said, what's wrong with your back? And he had crushed vertebrae, arthritis, this and that. And I said, hey, you a heroin addict? He said, yep. I said, hey, you got hepatitis? He said, yep. I said, you hate some woman? He said, yep. Forgave her, and I got him up walking. 
And he's doing pretty good, but he said it was about 20% better. And I said, okay, now, there's some more people you're going to have to forgive. It's not a me show up there. I used to think it was a me show. Let me show you the power of Jesus and how anointed I am. And I spend all my time trying to get some guy healed because I'd say, wow, everything I preach is riding on this miracle. No, God's word comes back non-void. When I preach the word of God, God does his business on the inside of a man with his powerful word. And he's going to bring people to salvation no matter what happens up here. And that that's just introducing people to the process of deliverance and healing. That guy has to want to be healed. There's people that don't want to be healed. They want $1,400 a month from Social Security Disability. They don't want to go work. They've given up on that. They love TV and sitting in the air conditioner. That's their life till they die. And they're going to get that check and ride this thing out. They don't want to be healed by no preacher. They'd like to get their demons out of their head so they're not, you know, arguing with themselves and they can click on the remote and have a good time. But they don't really want to be healed. You'd be surprised. See, the assumption that everybody makes is people are like you. People are from all kinds of different walks. People got different kind of demons. They got different kind of upbringings. And uh, you got to have discernment when God's telling you, okay, we're starting something here, and this is good for now. Let's move on somewhere else because we want to see everything happen in one night. We want to see everything happen instantaneously. But the reality is, you know, sometimes we're sowing a seed, sometimes we're watering it, but God will always bring about the harvest. Now, check this verse out. We all know John chapter 3, but starting in John 3 and 18, it says, He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of his only begotten Son of God. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come into the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes into the light that his deeds may be seen clearly and that what he has done has been done through God. Once you come into this light, you're going to see a lot of things about yourself that you thought were decent. God can't work with those things you thought were decent often. You got you to gotta let that new man come. You got to let that new man come. Pride is who? Pride is vicious. Self-sufficiency and independence, that's how you survive in this world. Those are attributes that make you, if you're living as a sinner in this world, you don't have those attributes, you get mowed over and you get nothing. Or as they say in jail, you get nothing. <laughs> Especially in that place. You come into this light, and you got to look at yourself for who you really are from the perspective of God's word and how the Holy Spirit convicts you. Because the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. He will convict you of the, of, of the sin that you're living in, but you got to let that thing become visible. I used to duck in all kinds of things. I used to duck in money all the time. I said, well, Lord, yeah, I know this is, I'm spending a lot of time on it, but I need this money now. I got to go, I got to go do this. And sometimes God is teaching you patience. He's teaching you patience and you got to wait on the Lord and God's going to come through. I got to learn it. I got to learn it. I do real estate two, three hours a day. Well, that's, that's hard to run a real estate business two, three hours a day, but God's saying, trust me. And if I look back in my last year, I made pretty close to as much as I did when I was working full time. And so he's showing, I'm going to take care of all your needs. This is my promise. God is faithful to his word. He'll always perform his word. He watches over his word to see who would stand on it in faith. And then it's his good pleasure. He'll go ahead and perform it. So he says, I'm going to take care of all your needs. But he says, I want you to put me first. Oh, see, narcissistic Christians will not do that. You got a million excuses, but my career, but my 401k, but my time, but my boyfriend, but this, this, and that. And what happens is you end up uh, completely stalling your deliverance, and you got to sit right there. And often if you don't make a move sitting there after a while, you end up getting worse. So what we got to realize first is that uh, we're not just trying to get delivered to get our old life back, number one. We're going to let God have his full way. you got to take those limitations off God. You've looked at yourself and you sized yourself up and tried to fit yourself in Christianity. And you said, well, here's my gifts. Here's my talents. Here's my passions. I think they used to do those, those little coarse things. I think those are full-on retarded. <laughs> uh, what are you good at? What do you like to do as a Christian? Do you like sharing with people? That, that, throw that thing and burn that thing. That warped your mind. 
God makes all things new. He takes a person that, that isn't a persuasive speaker and he makes him a public speaker for the kingdom of God. He takes a person that has no faith that's, that's a recluse that always draws back and now he steps forward and lays hands on sick people and sees them recover. God changes people. That's what he does and he's going to change you just as well as he changes everybody else. And so we got to realize that we're not just going back to our old life, but we're going on. Amen. Demons are, are so masterfully deceptive. And they'll always tell you how you failed, how you always didn't do something good enough, and how you were always uh, inefficient here or there. But what you got to really trust is that God's going to teach you. He's going to teach you with everything. He's going to teach you about your failures and your inadequacies and your deficiencies. And he's going to teach you then how to not rely on your, yourself but to rely on him. That's where all the miracles are, are in the Holy Ghost, in your spirit, man. That's not in your flesh. It's not in your intellect, your intelligence. It's not in your human wisdom, although God uses all those things to uh, allow you to minister and be effective. But, but we got to realize that we're not perfect. You know, there's some things I did, and, and, and I used to, I used to uh, beat myself up pretty bad, but it's really funny. The first message I ever preached was at a fellowship of Christian athletes with a coach who I was so pissed off at. That's a kind word. This is church. And I was being recruited by Nebraska, and I spoke with Tom Osborne, the coach at that time, about playing there. And I didn't do anything we were supposed to do. I smoked weed all summer. I didn't lift weights, eat good. But I was ready to go come the first day of camp. And I had a good beginning of the season. And the recruiters came in, and they recruited my buddy also. And I said, hey, did they ask about me? He said, yeah, coach told him you weren't even going to graduate. I was like, this dirty, low down, you know, I ripped him a new one. But I didn't understand that exactly what he had prophesied was going to happen. See, he had been in the business of coaching football for 20-some years. And he saw the road that I was on, and that did not re lead to success. It led to destruction and loss. And so I end up getting saved uh, about, uh, about nine years later, and he's the first one that invited me to speak when he heard my testimony and said, would you like to speak at a meeting tonight for Fellowship of Christian Athletes? And I spoke this message, and it was pretty elementary, and I used to condemn myself for it once I got all this biblical knowledge. But now I've came full circle, and that is a great message. The message I preached was, hey, it's one thing to be a Christian, but you got to do something, and you got to love people that aren't like you. When I was around Fellowship Christian Athletes, all they did was hang around guys like them. All they did, instead of drinking three times a week, they drank once a month. They didn't have full intercourse with women, but they sure did everything they could do with their girlfriends, and we saw them as a bunch of hypocrites. That's what we saw them as, and we didn't see them with no power. We didn't see them with no love. They stayed to themselves, and they were looking to add among themselves people who looked like themselves. Now I broke it down, and then I used to condemn myself for it. I said, oh, I should have been more kind and talked about the love of Jesus, and I should have done this and that. That devil was trying to talk me out of what I had preached under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost through all kinds of biblical teachings that I had heard. Look, we, look. We make mistakes. Nobody's perfect, but God will, God will use what you got when you do it in faith and you do it in love. He'll always use it. There's times that I led people to Jesus, and I thought, man, I blew it with this guy. This guy's toast, man. He's probably going to go to hell. I preached him a hundred times. He ain't listening to me. I'm one of the only guys he trusts in the world. He won't even watch a TV preacher. He hates everybody that's on TV. He thinks they're a scoundrel. I must have really blew this. And at the end, he gets saved, and he says, hey, man, I watched your life. And I kept looking closer and closer, and my conclusion was God was in your life, and I wanted the God you serve. And so you might think you're not doing nothing, but look, you're always moving in the right direction when you're doing it in love and you're sharing the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Number two is we have to, uh, let's see, what is number two? <laughs> number two is you've got to find page two. I had it on the cover letter. I'm telling you. So that's what's great about preaching in the jail. You, you don't even need notes. You just start ripping. And then you flip open the Bible here and there, and, and, and you're good to go. 
number two, let me read this scripture, starting it out. Luke chapter 14, verse 25. Now, great multitudes went with him, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, his wife, his children, his brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, cannot be my disciples. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, at least after he has laid the foundation and he is not able to finish it. All who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. What king going to war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a long way off, he sends a delegation and he asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you who does not forsake, forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. When he's talking about hating your family, he's talking about this is comparative. Yeah. God's here, not your kids. Amen. God's here. It's a big problem with deliverance is getting your kids up here. You're trying to be the Holy Ghost to your kids. Without me, they got nothing left. They'll just die. No. If you get out of the way, the Holy Ghost can show you his power. But if you want to be the Holy Ghost, he's going to step back and respect your wishes, and you can keep feeding into that sin and the demise and the trap that your children are in. you got to let them go. And it's hard. It's called faith, meaning you can't control them. you got to trust the Word of God. you got to trust him. And so dying to yourself is tough, man. I had a plan for my life, and I was going to be a rich man. And... Uh, I was going to do a lot of other things, and I'm not going to say those at church, but all my mentors had told me these things were great, which were teenage uh, kids in locker rooms, and this was the life I was going to live. You had money. You had, that's all you needed, because I could realize, hey, man, you're going to get old, so you got to have fine linens and nice possessions and the ability to take great vacations when you're old, because you're not going to have that flesh. You're not going to have that ability to to do those things you used to do, so you're going to have to have the cash. And that was my one goal. I want to be rich. I want to have some money. I can't be some average guy living in Mesa in a track home, driving a Nissan Altima. <laughs> exactly where I'm, at, where I'm at right now. Can't be that guy. And I become a Christian, and I had all this, I didn't have a lot of money, but I had six figures and a couple houses and stuff like that. And I heard God's voice, give all your cash away to the church and start over and trust me. <sighs> I felt it too. It wasn't, it wasn't some kundalini spirit trying to, you know, some psycho prophetic guy laying hand. give all your money to the church. It was the Holy Ghost. I felt it. I said, oh, I can't do that, Lord. I got everything I made with tickets was not all of it was a hustle. I had a legitimate ticket office. We did <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs football. We did Husker football. We bought in advance group sales. We did all kinds of things that were legit, but a lot of it was a hustle. And so he wasn't saying give away your houses, give away your car. Just this cash. Just trust me. Well, I wouldn't do it. So where it all went down to, went all the way down to twenty five hundred bucks after sixteen months of failed two failed businesses, stress. I couldn't do it. I couldn't obey God. The best place you could be with God was when you got nothing. Amen. You got nothing. Man, everything you got, you praise God. You thank God for what you have. These guys get out of jail, and they're like, what am I going to do? There's a mountain on top of me. I said, a mountain ain't on top of you. I'll take you back to 1998 when I owed, you know, $100,000 in debt. I owed all this money, and I had to work myself out of debt and provide for my family now, two kids, a wife, and I owed all this money. That's a, that's a load. You got nothing. You don't own any bills. Everything you get, you thank God. And when you're faithful with a little, God can raise you up. But your flesh doesn't want to die. It just wants to keep holding and controlling these things. And American Christianity is always incorporate yourself and your dreams with Jesus. That's basically the message that you get from these churches. They don't go too deep. They don't want to offend anybody. They're, they got pride and, and, and all that stuff themselves, and they're proud at the size of their churches and the, and the great things that they do. That's pride. I'm telling you, most of the time, otherwise, you'd thin the herd. You'd get down to brass tacks. You'd realize, hey, I'll call it like it is. None of you is giving any money. You, you, that's the, most of those churches, only 10% give to the church. 
90% on long for a, we love you, Lord. We're your friends. Rain down a blessing on us. We're not going to take any faith to do anything. 10% of churches or, 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 or the average church only has 10% of the congregation that actually serve in any type of capacity of ministry. Now, there's good churches out there. I, I, I've been to them where the majority of the church is active and serving and doing these things. But I'm talking about the average church. There's some definitely... Uh, above average Holy Ghost churches. There's churches that do deliverance. Now, I didn't know it. Tons of these Hispanic churches, they cast out devils like crazy. You go down to Mexico, you talk about deliverance, they get excited. They're not, they're not stupefied like American churches. Oh, you can't have a demon. But they've been around. They realize you can have demons. They're not, they're not fooled one bit. So we got to die to ourselves, and it ain't easy. This is going to take the Holy Ghost. It's going to take the Holy Ghost. God will call you into a ministry. It doesn't seem right. I'm down in this little office. I got to be down there counseling people. Oh, I'm going to do this. I already got a ministry that doesn't pay any money. We're going to be down there. How's this going to work? <laughs> this doesn't make sense. God say, this is a faith walk. When you're doing things for God, real Holy Ghost ministries, you don't need to see how everything's going to line up and everything's going to work in your favor. You got to just know that I'm faithful and I'm going to take care of you. And then you start seeing God move, and then you start having joy. I mean, I can have a good day. This last Tuesday was a great day. I left as excited as, as anything I've ever done in life. That's an exciting day. Now, when I go home and try to reiterate some of the things that went down to my wife, it's kind of confusing to her but, <laughs> that these people go through all these things and have all these struggles. But, hey, I had a great time doing it. And, and, I, and I show her the pleasure of listening to first graders as she tells me all their problems, which gives, <laughs> I have no care in the world about some first graders and the crazy things that they do. So it's kind of give and take in a, a marriage relationship. Galatians chapter 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Really having your life bought, and it's no longer you who live and seeing Jesus just come out. And there's times in ministry I really got to go down. I'm tired. I go down to the jails, and sometimes when the other guys that I got on the team, they can't show up. They, 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 they have days, and I got to do three services in a row. I literally got to say, Lord, come on. You got to do something here because I'm out of gas. I'm out of gas, and these are not pretty faces when they roll in. They're not always happy. Sometimes it's pissed off days. That, that thing will infect those crowds like you can't believe. There's fights in there, and they come in mad. They come in disappointed because their recreation was taken away. And you got to come in there bringing the light of Christ. you got to come in there bringing joy. you got to come in there giving something that they reach out and grasp for. And so I, gotta, I learned how to trust in God and have him do something that I'm not capable of doing at that time. And so if, you, if your life is hidden with him, these, these things can happen. These things can happen in Ephesians chapter 22 and 23. It says that in reference to your former manner of life, that you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Well, your mind is trained off experiences. I was like the first kid labeled with ADD in, in 19, what was it? I was in fifth grade. That would have been uh, probably 1975, and they no, that would have been a little later, like 78. I had they they labeled me with ADD. Well, man, I was a kid. My dad grew up on a farm. My grandfather grew up on a farm. On down the line, we can't find anyone that wasn't a farmer. So my dad, after Vietnam, came moved to the city. And he taught me everything, how to hunt at an early age. I rode mini bikes, motorcycles, bicycles, and now we got to sit there. And you, can't, you couldn't move around back in the day. And I'd wander and look around the window, and I'd do some things, and I'd get up too many times to go to the drinking fountain. And they'd try to diagnose me with attention deficit disorder. Well, the reality was I was a person in my DNA, who I was as a human, that learned by experiences. And, and the experience of ministering and loving people and doing things for God is what renews your mind. 
Because then you start, you, you know it conceptually by reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Don, John. I tell everybody in the jail, I said, hey, you're not ready for any kind of ministry until God's clicked something inside you through reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because this is the revelation of how God now feels towards humanity. And now your thoughts become his thoughts. And that's in theory until you step out and do those things. Now your mind is truly renewed from not just knowing it theoretically through the word of God, which is living and active, but now you know it for yourself by stepping out and doing it in experiences. And that's what the word's telling you there, to, to renew yourself. Let's go to Luke chapter 9, 22 and 23. It says, and he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. We, it's just... What's your cross? Well, look, he's got, a, he's got a, a, a ministry. Remember, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. The yoke was the oxen. And so it says, don't yoke yourself up with someone that's not equal with you. You can't be married to a non-believer because you're on this yoke and you're trying to go one way and they're trying to go another way. Well, Jesus is saying, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When I'm, when I'm leading you somewhere, I'm not driving you to do anything. I, I'm leading you gently. And so when he puts this burden on you, I, 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 this, this yoke, rather, is not a burden. And it was, man, I got to get somebody saved, man. My friends are going to hell. I've been going to church for five or six years. And it took till Brother Steve, who preaches here uh, periodically on Thursday, we were scalping tickets in, uh, we were in Dallas, Texas at the time, soon to be followed by incarceration together within the next 24 hours. <laughs> it was an interesting week. And he said, look, if you're not saved, the wrath of God remains on you. The minute you sinned and you knew you were sinning, the age of accountability, he said, when you were an adult, he says, your sins were imputed upon you. Now you've got to pay for your sins if you don't accept Jesus and his payment on the cross where his blood was shed for the remission of sin. He takes the sin and he washes it into the sea of forgetfulness where he counts it against you no more. Your sin is counted against you because you have not been born again. Do you want to get saved? I, I had no other just, I, there was nothing else coming to even mine. I had a million excuses. Listen to part of the gospel. But until he broke the full gospel down to me, I said, yeah, yeah, okay, let's do this. I don't know what this means. This is some kind of commitment to God. Look, when you confess Jesus from your heart, you believe that he is who he said he was and he did what he said he did, that he rose from the dead, that you would be saved when you confess and believe in your heart. I got saved. Something happened supernaturally. And I realized that day I got to get people saved. And I wasn't living right. I tried to get people saved smoking weed. I try to lead people to Jesus while we had just got done scalping and hustling everybody at the whole ballpark and got over on 90% of them through manipulation. And I would try to share Jesus, and, and it wasn't working. It wasn't working. I was trying to incorporate Jesus and the calling that God had placed upon me in my sin-stained condition. I didn't know, like the full body, all the word, you got to edify yourself with the word of God and prayer, that you got to come out from the world and now Christ will shine on you. Now you're, you're, you're setting yourself apart for God that he could use you as a weapon, as a vessel in his hands. And so there's something God put on everybody. When you got saved, you sensed something. You sensed something about helping kids. You, you sensed something about feeding the people that are starving. You sensed something about just preaching the word or being a pastor and leading a small group of people maybe in your house and see where it would grow. But there's always something that God puts on you. Well, Look, you're going to have to put, a self, put yourself aside in order for this thing to happen. It's not going to help in your misery and pain and your self-defeated attitude, your poor self-worth. And, yeah, love is something. I only love one woman in my life, thank God, and I'm married to her to this day, 23 years as of Tuesday. And, uh, but that's, that is a ripping when you love somebody, a man or a woman, and they betray you, and they cheat on you, and then they, they, they abandon you, it's, it's a hard thing. I, I know it by experience of counseling, and I see the brokenness of an individual. But what you have to realize is God is a restorer of all things. And most people don't realize when they read the book of Job, and, and it says God gave him double. How do you think he got double? He went and built the house. He went and... Uh, 
got a front from one of those friends on some seeds, and he went and planted them seeds, and God gave increase to his harvest, and then he started, took some of that money, and he bought a, a couple animals, and they began to breed them, and God began to give the increase. God just didn't give him some buildings and run a herd of flocks on into his pens. He was blessing the fruits of his labor because he, he came out of that situation by in faith, and God began to Give him increase and multiplication. You got to let that stuff go or you're never moving forward with God. You got to let those people go. It hurts. It's, it's, it's a tearing. I mean, I could only imagine if my kids abandoned me and cursed me out and left me. It would be terrible. But ultimately, no matter what happens, we got to put God first. Yes. We got to put God first. And when we died to ourselves, my life is not my own. I realize that everything comes my way as a test. And, and it's easy to say, this is how life is, but man, when you go through those tests, they're tough. I wouldn't have known about deliverance until I had a, a guy, a good friend, stab me in the back and cost me hundreds of thousands. But ultimately, when I came out of it, God rose me up and I knew about deliverance. I knew nothing about deliverance. I saw demonically infected people all day long. They'd call me, the devil's on me. I just did a bunch of coke. I'm freaking out. I'd go over that devil, shake my hand and run down the block, be gone. I had no idea how to take authority of a situation. I was, I was completely ignorant spiritually. So God forged me as a weapon <coughs> so that he could use me to get people delivered. Through what? Through some hard times. So you got to realize that what the devil meant for harm, God truly will use for his glory if you trust him, if you submit to his ways, if you put him above your problems, if you put him above your situation. One more verse on dying to ourselves. John chapter 12, 24, he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That's what God's looking for, man. That's, that's the most exciting thing is to be a fruitful Christian. Yeah. And, uh, and it's interesting. You know, a lot of times we don't see those rewards on earth. We don't see it. I know Mike Smith doesn't see it that much. I'm here a lot. People come and go. This is called a transitional ministry. Our goal is to get you delivered and back doing what you're called to do, going wherever you're called to go, wherever, living wherever you're supposed to live. This isn't a place that you're supposed to, unless you're called to be a part of this team, but it's a, it's a transitional training center. To, to, to train you up, get you delivered, and go on and, and do what God called you to do. And so you invest into a lot of people, and, and then they're gone. And that's the reality of it. And, uh, you know, it's something special about starting a church, and then you see everybody. I went to a church like that, and, I mean, everybody had a story about how they were added to the church, and this guy was saved by this guy sharing the gospel to him, and he was his neighbor, and it was a great fellowship and being a part of that ministry, you would see those fruits every day. But there's often fruits in your ministry that you don't see until that day. And so it's not always about what you see. It's not always about what you can rise up that morning and look out in your office and see all that. I mean, when I was doing construction, man, the, the rewards were right there. Hey, man, I'm sitting on X amount of equity right here. This thing's up and going. This is this is a six-figure deal. This is a $30,000 deal. Every day I was operating by what I could see. And I knew the market so well that if any opportunity came along, I could jump on it because I was in the trenches of it. And that's what we have to realize is we got to keep doing good. And these, these, are, these are important things to the kingdom of God. These are important things to you, even though you always don't see it. There's times when guys have come back and, and they'll say, hey, you know, that started the deliverance. But I went back, you know, I was living in Louisiana, and I played your tapes, Mike, and I finished my deliverance, and this is the ministry that's happening. So you get all these constant reminders that these are the right things of God, and they're bearing good fruit. But there's some days where you gotta, you got to delight yourself in the Lord. you got to offer up a sacrifice of praise. You don't feel like praise, and you feel like you've been sucked the life out of. You feel drained. You're wondering, hey, come on, where's my, give me something, Lord, you know, give me one of them. Let me feel like I used to feel to those Jesus culture songs again. Tune me back into that one. I've, I'm like all you. I've played the same song 50 times in a row. I, I've been there, but I get days when I can't even tune into it. I'm just not there because it's tough times. But we got to realize when we died to ourselves, then 
we can continue on. The last thing is most people underestimate the devil. Oh, man, underestimating the devil is a huge mistake. And I see preachers do it all the time. Big preacher, that devil's under my feet. Doing, oh, come on, man, that devil's, that devil's right around the corner, ready to run you over. He will, yeah, he probably put that little pep in your little dance step there, buddy. He's, he's moving right now. It's a big joke to him. This thing ain't no joke. This devil don't stop. This devil does not stop. And uh, he's, he's always waiting, and he's always looking. And he, unfortunately, he's always using that stuff that's in you. And until you get that stuff out, man, it's going to be a tough road, man. Fault finders, nitpickers, backbiters, man, you're, you're, no, you're going nowhere. You got to repent of that stuff today. Always nitpicking. Then that stuff, what it does ultimately after you're seasoned at it long enough, God, then the devil gets you to point at God and start nitpicking God, telling God how he's not a good God and he's not sovereign and he's not doing what he should do and how dare God. And now you're really sunk. And so you got to get rid of these spirits. These are, these are real demon spirits that people face every day. And uh, it says uh, in... 1 Thessalonians 2.18, this is Paul talking to the church of Thessalonica. He says, therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. Come on, come on, the devil's under your feet. This devil was hindering one of the most anointed man, er, men ever on the face of the earth was the apostle Paul. And the devil was hindering him from going to the church that he had started. And then a little bit uh, later... He talks about in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he says, For in fact, we told you before when we were with you that you would suffer tribulation just as it happened. And you know for this reason, I could no longer endure it. And I sent to know your faith, least by some means the tempter had tempted you that our labor might be in vain. He started getting nervous. Now, I know some people say, oh, Paul, you had fear. You should have cast that out. He was a reality preacher. He realized, hey, it's been a while. I haven't heard from these men. And he says, uh, I told you there'd be tribulation. I told you this devil would come for you. I told you when you turn around and you burnt them idols and you turn from worshiping things that were created by God rather than the creator, that you'd face the adversary. And so he was worried and he couldn't endure it any longer. And he sent to test their faith because he was afraid the devil had got him and everything that he had worked and found in that church would be for nothing, that they had went back to their idols. Hey, that stuff happens quick, man. You, no matter what you see, you got a sin nature. You got a sin nature, and the devil's able to play that sin nature like a fiddle. Here we see the plagues come upon the Egyptians, and God leads his people out of the, out of the hand of Pharaoh. He does all these miracles. He's parting the sea, and, and the leader just leaves him for a little while. And what do they come back to? Perversion a golden calf, and a demand to go back to Egypt, to go back. They're demanding to go back into slavery. And so there is a sin nature that, that has to be, you got to put that, that flesh into check. You get all the way delivered, and you still got your flesh, and you still got your humanity, and it is prone to deception. And that devil is going to work everything to his advantage. All the sin-staying problems of this world, all the trials, all the tribulations, all the difficulties in this place. He says uh, in Revelation 12 that he's able to deceive the whole world. Second Corinthians, he's able to disguise himself as an angel of light. Man, that devil is a masterful deception. Man, I had two guys. One had to lie and said he had to go to pee, so I called. And then they were both Mormons, and they bounced on the service. They said, you better get the Book of Mormon and read it at the door when the guard came to get him. That devil masqueraded as Jesus to the Mormon church. That ain't the Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. That ain't God manifested in the flesh. That's the brother of Satan. That's another Jesus. Paul said, if anyone comes to you and preaches another gospel than the gospel which I preached to you, let him be accursed. Those are prospering, good-looking people living under a curse from Satan himself. That devil is a liar, and he can deceive the whole world if it was possible. 
But God is sovereign and God is always willing to help somebody. God is always willing to give you his word and to teach you in his ways. And then, hey, he'll take you off from there. But the reality is this devil's going to try to send some trickery to you. Man, what is this stuff now? Everyone wants to bring in Judaism. Isn't that the whole New Testament? They kept trying to bring in Judaism. That's what they kept doing. It's like, oh, yeah, we're uh, I don't even know what they call it. Anymore. I don't even want to get into it. But the reality is all these people get caught up in trying to obey the law. You got to worship the Sabbath on this day. You got to do this. You got to do that. They, they came up with four things. Hey, you guys got to quit being sexually immoral. Big problem with all humanity. You got to not be eating meat that was strangled. You can't be drinking blood. Come on. There was like four things that you had to do. This was it. We, weren't, we were not Jews. We're Gentiles saved by grace through faith. This is not of ourselves. This is a gift from God. The works that God requires is for us to believe on the one in whom he has sent. He fulfilled all righteousness for us that we would be found in him. He dies the death we deserve so that in exchange we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We now have a high priest at the right hand of the Father who prays for us and intercedes for us. When he rose from the dead on the third day, he said, it's better that I go because if I go, then I will send the comforter. I'll send the Holy Spirit, which is the power of God. All the gifts and your anointing is in the Holy Ghost. And so the devil's going to war and try to bring you back down to this natural man, trying to f figure God out, trying to articulate things about God. This is how you know God. This is how you're convinced that evolution is a lie and God is real. Look, without an experience with God, you'll always be prone to deception. You need to have an encounter with the living God. The kingdom of God isn't about word. It's about power. Well, let me tell you, the devil has power. It says in Luke 10, 19, I give you power over the devil's power. We had another LDS guy come, and it's not because this was a former LDS uh, building. He actually got a touch from the church in Alabama that Mike goes and preaches to. And his daughter had got a touch, and he got a soul wound off, and he comes back, and he comes here, and he's Mormon. And I said, you're Mormon? You mean you used to be Mormon? He said, no, I'm Mormon. 34 years as a Mormon. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I think I got to get going. This is about lunchtime. Chipotle is two miles down the block. I'm, I'm going to eat. This is a waste of my time. But I said, well, you know, Lord, you can do all things. You're always showing me something that's far beyond my expectation. And this is a job for you. I thought I could get him delivered, and I was fooled. This is a Mormon. And uh, that's not the first one. We already got one partially healed. He didn't come back uh, to finish his. He emails me every once in a while, life not going good. I told him I'll help him when he gets rid of Mormonism. And so, so I said, well, let me take a chance. What's wrong with you? And he lists one, two, three things. I said, all right, let's take a chance. And the dude goes through deliverance for 30 minutes. Then I started calling the Mormon demons out, and it was crickets. So, you know, like all powerful men of God, I went and got my mentor, Mike, from the office. I said, Mike, I got a problem. The guy that you gave me for the counseling session is Mormon. I can't get out these Mormon demons. He goes, what? I said, yep, that's what I said too. Come on down. And Mike breaks him down incredibly. He says, now tell me about your experiences with the Holy Ghost. He goes through the two, and he goes, okay, you had two in the Christian church. How many you had in the Mormon church? Zero. He says, isn't this telling you something, that Christianity is real and Mormonism is demonic? Oh, well, I got 34 years invested. He said, I don't care what you got invested in. He says, what price can a man give in exchange for his soul? And he says, I'll tell you what, we can't get these demons out because you want them. Can't get demons out, people want them demons. You got free will. God's not going to violate your free will. How am I going to supersede your free will? You want to hate somebody? Hey, I'm going to plead with you not to hate him. You want to hate yourself? You want to not forgive people that betrayed you, stabbed you in the back? I'm going to plead with you, but ultimately you got free will. You want to claim your mental illness and your social security disability? I'm going to plead with you, but you got free will. And he tells the guy, hey, I want you to go back and pray. I want you to give me a commitment. We gave you two hours in here. Can you give me a commitment that you'll go home and pray, tell God and ask God to reveal to you what is real and what's a lie and what's demonic? He said, yeah, I'll do that. He said, then you come back here Friday. It's never been back. It's never been back. It's a, sad, it's a sad reality. This devil 
is uh, now we got a seed planted. I'm believing the guy's going to come back one day. He's going to roll in here and we're going to get this thing finished. But the reality is this devil's powerful. And uh, you got to make sure that he don't trick you up with some of these religious doctrines, these kooky things. You know how many people gave up on church when, when the economy crashed? Well, we know because we were trying to buy a church. And there was a million churches for sale. And there was a story why it all went down. And the pastor was always, hey, our congregation all left. When the economy crashed, it whittled on down. Our offerings went down to nothing because they were thinking they were giving something to God to get something back. And so they stopped giving. They were giving out of their abundance. They weren't giving out of their love. They weren't giving out of, uh, from their heart. They were giving because they wanted something back and they were exposed under tough times. Now the economy's booming. There's, there's only like 10 churches for sale in all of Phoenix. Hardly any. It's back in the full swing again. This devil, and I'm not saying they're all demonic. I, I don't go to them all. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that this devil is a very, very deceptive individual. And he deceives people. He's called the master of deception. And he's able to do some things that are absolutely unbelievable, starting these cults. Could you imagine some guy saying, I, I was in the wilderness, and I came back with some gold plates, but you can't see them. And uh, everything you do is apostate, and this is the true way now. But, hey, let me throw in a kicker. Uh, we can have multiple wives. Dude, it's got my attention. Tell me more. Jehovah Witnesses, come on. Jesus is the reincarnation of Michael the Archangel? He tells you if you get a prophet, a prophet's reward you'll receive. Or an angel, you'll get an angel's reward. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. And God will have his full way in your life. Jesus made a way so that a sinful man could be reconciled to a holy God. And he says, if you love me, me and my father will come and make a home with you. And then I will manifest myself to them. There's the manifestation of God inside you. And it's not depression and mental illness and porn. It's not self-hatred and backbiting. It's not stumbling and falling on your face every time you try to get a ministry going. No, those are the snares of the devil. I think what we need, we can go on for another 30 minutes, but what we need is deliverance. Yeah. And, and pride gets people to stop. It happens at the elementary stages. These guys in jail, they'll get two rounds of deliverance, and all of a sudden some gift will come out, and they'll start ministering. They'll, they'll have a good little Bible study. And I've seen incredible things. I've seen this one guy. He was about this big. He was from Guatemala, a little uh, guy who, Came over here illegally. This dude could dream dreams. And dudes were like, dude, can you dream a dream about me? And all these things were happening. I didn't know you could order dreams on demand. <laughs> and they're all happening. And they're biblical. I couldn't believe it. And then I seen the guy, and he had about very limited biblical knowledge. But it was just a gift. And so these guys will go through a little bit of deliverance. A gift will come out. And then they'll stop their deliverance because they don't want anyone else to think they're deficient. Because the other people aren't going through deliverance. And, they, and the devil goes, they're watching you. Hey, this doesn't look right. They don't understand that. Don't do that here. And they stop their deliverance. That's what happens here so much it's just as well. The devil does the same tricks. You start going through deliverance and some good stuff starts coming out. And now you're saying, well, I'm just going there for the word of God. No, the devil, the, the, the Lord will go deep and bring something up out of there. He'll bring something out of there. There's this weird stuff in your generational line. It's weird. It's just unexplainable weird. That's all I can say. Just stuff comes out of you. It was weird. I was doing really good. And all of a sudden, one day, I'm coming home from, from uh, jail. And I learn, I praise myself home now. I praise God all the way home. I used to cast out demons. And uh, there's some demons that you can't. you got to praise them devils out. That's just the Holy Ghost coming in. And the devil's got to go. We know that because David used to play uh, his harp for Saul and his demons would have to leave. Why? Because God was inhabiting the praises of his, of his worshiper, of his person. And the devil knew he was cast out of heaven, so when the heaven comes down, he's got to flee. 
And so I'm praising God, and all of a sudden I start just these yelling demons. Rah! Rah! I'm like, what in the world is this? There was some anger deep in my soul. My dad was an angry man. My grandfather was an angry man. When you're, when you're kind of like a bigger guy, you kind of learn this defense mechanism. You can just bark people into a corner. Blah, 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 blah. You, it works, too. Like, people just, I don't need to deal with that. I think I'm tough, but that's just not worth the try. And it works. It's a defense mechanism to keep people away from you. And it had been passed down from my grandfather that I knew had it. My dad had it full-blown. I mean, it was bad. He would cuss at people in the neighbor, uh, or driving in the neighborhood, and then people would look scared and go, see, that is that dirty rat. He is that person. And he would just assume something about the person because of a strange reaction they'd have to him yelling at a random person. And I picked all this stuff up, and it was coming out through worshiping God. That's what was so great about last week. Mike said, hey, let's test you where you're at. We'll see who's getting deliverance tonight. Praise yourself out of this one. And some people cut out. And they're like, hey, I need some tunes for this kind of worship. You know, I don't got it inside me. And they bounced. But some people praised themselves through and got an incredible deliverance. We can, get a, we can go to another level right now if you just be transparent with God. I, I tell all kinds of stupid stories because for 10 years of my ministry, I never let anybody know anything about my deficiencies. I was coming in there, man of God, sharing the word of God, and I've been called by God. I don't need to tell you I was a failure at any points. Now I have no problem. Some of those things are embarrassing, but they don't stick to me because that guy is dead. I'm not that guy anymore. I'm not that guy. I'm somebody completely different. I know that's, that was a failure. That was, that was sin. That was, that was goofy. That was bad, but I'm not that person anymore. And if you'll let yourself go here, then you can get another layer of this, this stuff off. You can get another layer of, of the Holy Ghost going deep and showing you something. See, when we come into the light, he's the light. He makes everything visible. And in order for him to shine through you, man, we gotta, we, the, the, the darkness is a blocker. He's going to shine on you and get you to deal with that before that thing can shine on the world and, and be a light to the world and have people drawn to you and having God send those people to you so they can so you can uh, help them. Amen. All right, well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everybody that came out. I thank you for everybody that's watching on the Internet, Lord. I've been praying for those people on the Internet. Stay with me if you're watching online. I've been praying for you. It's going to be a good night. Lord, we just want to be transparent before you, Lord. Lord, everything good that is in us has been done through you. Every good thing in us has been done through you, Lord. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. I want to repent of every prideful thing I've ever done, Lord. We're sorry for every prideful thing that we've ever done, Lord Jesus. There's pride in our ministry. There's pride in leading our family. There's pride in running our businesses and work. We just want to repent, Lord God. We're sorry, Lord. Pride allowed that sting of offense to come upon us. Someone came against us. They hurt us. They wronged us. They robbed us, they cheated us, they betrayed us, they misled us. Lord, we, by faith, Lord, we repent of hating them, Lord. We said we forgave them, but we know better than that. Every time we think about them, we're still pissed off, Lord. Right now, by faith, I repent of judging and hating people. I repent of hating my family. I repent of hating co-workers and past lovers. Lord, I repent of it right now, Lord God. You love me as I am, Lord, and you said I'm a vessel and that I can receive salvation by faith and I stepped into the realm of salvation by faith. I believe you are the Son of God and I believe you love me despite of my sins and failures and what you gave to me, you asked me to give it away. So I forgive, Lord Jesus. I forgive myself. I forgive those people that hurt me right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would just shine that light, that Holy Ghost light on me right now, Lord. Show me, Lord. What do I need to be delivered from right now, Lord Jesus? What do I need to be delivered from, Lord? I don't want to only go so far in deliverance, Lord. I want to be completely set free. I believe I have a ministry. I believe I have a calling. I believe I have an anointing. 
I believe there's a destiny, Lord, to fulfill on this earth before I'm with you for eternity, and I want to do it, Lord God. So I willingly die to myself right now, Lord, and I allow you to send the Holy Ghost light to shine on me and show me. Show me, Lord God. I want to repent of it right now. When he begins to show you, just repent of it. Come on. Some of this stuff's real. Your mind is so enwebbed and entrenched with lies and deception. You're always criticizing yourself. You're always looking at all your deficiencies and all your inadequacies and all your failures. Just forgive yourself right now. You can't move on unless you realize that your life is now hidden with Christ. There's a new life. I forgive myself, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I repent of the porn. I repent of the love and money, the greed, the lying, the manipulation, the cheating. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Send the Holy Ghost anointing, Lord. Send the Holy Ghost anointing to break the yoke of bondage upon your children's back. Everybody watching this online, Lord, I pray you'd send the anointing to break the yoke that's upon them. If you got to go, I send a blessing with you. Thank you for coming. And everybody that's staying, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I bind the devil. I bind self-hatred in the name of Jesus. The ministry team can come forward. I bind you to stay in your seats for now. Just agree with me in this prayer. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Self-hatred and self-destructive behavior, I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I uproot you and command you to come out right now. Come out right now, that manipulating spirit, that deceitful spirit. I turn my relatives over to the Lord. I turn my children over to the Lord. I repent right now. Just do what God's called you to do. He brought it in the light he showed you. Come out, you foul devil of drugs. Come out right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind sexual immorality and perversion. I bind self-mutilation in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind witchcraft and sorcery and divination. I uproot you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind all the spirits of the new age in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you to come out. Spirits of sickness and disease, spirits of back pain, spirits of knee pain, chronic headaches. Come out now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out, mental illness, homosexuality, I bind you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out right now. The demons from the occult, I bind you now. Demons from the occult, come out right now in the name of Jesus. Occult in the bloodline, come out right now. You got to engage in the fight, people. If you do nothing, you get nothing. Command them to go. Command them to go right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind your power, Satan. I have authority over you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I'm not a pervert. I'm not a loser. I got a chance with Jesus Christ, and you're not going to hinder me. Come out, you devil. Come out right now. Frustration and anxiety and fear. Fear has to do with torment. I cast you out right now by the love of God. Come out now. Fear. Fear you're bound in the name of Jesus. Take two or three big breaths. I'll start coming out of you. They're already moving on people. Take a few big breaths. Come out, devil. Come out, anxiety and fear. Go. Anxiety and fear. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Anxiety and fear. Come out right now. Double crossing and manipulation. The love of money. Cheating. Cheating on people. Cheating on the co-workers. Cheating. Come out right now, you cheater. Come out right now, you cheater. Fornicator. Come out right now. Come out now. Come out. Cancer spirits. You come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Witchcraft. You lose, lose that woman right now. Loose that woman witchcraft right now. Witch, I call you out in the name of Jesus. Witch, I call you out in the name of Jesus. Come out of there, you devil. Come out of her right now. Come out of that spine. Kundalini, false holy spirits, come out now. Come out now in the name of Jesus. False holy spirits, you come out right now. Condemnation spirits, you come out now. Come out, you devil. Come out, you devil. Fear, you come out. Fear, you come out now. Fear, you come out now. Come out, you devil. Go. Come out, come out, come out, evil, come out, come out, come out, come out, you devil. Come out right now, oppression, you come out right now. Come out, you liar. Witchcraft, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Take a big breath. Come out, witchcraft, I bind you. Come out, come out, come out. Witchcraft and sorcery, come out. Witchcraft and sorcery, come out. Witchcraft and sorcery, come out. Come out, oppression, you come out right now. The spirit of oppression, I call you out in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Oppression and depression, I call you out in the name and the authority of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind you from the heart and the mind of this man right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Take a big breath. Go, devil. Go. Go. Go out. Go out. Go out. Fear. Come out. Fear of not being good enough. Fear of not being loved. Fear of not being called by God. Fear of not being saved. Come out. You're a liar. You're a liar. Come out right now. He's not mentally ill. Come out now. Come out. 
Come out right now. Come out. Depression, you're a liar. Leave his mind. Leave his mind right now. What do you need prayer for, sir? Would you come here? What's the main thing? What's wrong with you? Okay. Okay, this is what you do. Take a big cough right now. Start loosening him up. Come out, devil. Come out. Come out, devil. Come out. There he is. Go. Come out. We bind you. We lose you. Come out. We bind you. We lose you. Come out. Come out. Depression, not good enough. Come out. Keep going. Those are the things cracking on you. That's him. Come out. Pain in his body. Demons causing pain in his body. Come out. Come out. Chronic tiredness. Come out. Chronic laziness. Come out. Chronic distractions. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Let's go, devil. Keep going, sir. You're getting a good, you got a good anointing. Robert. Come out. Come out, devil. Let's go. Engage in the fight. Depression and anxiety is starting to go. Keep coming. Let this man's gift go in Jesus' name. Let this man's gift go in Jesus' name. Come out, you condemning spirit. Come out. Let his gifts go right now in Jesus' name. Come out now. Come out. Turmoil and distractions. Come out. Keep breathing. Come out. Come out. It's a time for another level. Come out. You told him it was enough. You told him it was enough deliverance. You're a liar. He came in to get all the way free. Come out, devil. I bind you from his mind over processing spiritual things. Come out right now. I bind every generational curse of justifying things. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. He's going to walk by faith. Come out. Come out. There it is. Go. Go. Keep going. Go out. Go out, Satan. Go out, Satan. Go out. Go out faster. Come out of those joints. Come out of those joints. Go out of those joints. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Demon's blocking her spiritual prosperity. Come out. Demon's blocking her faith. Come out right now. Go. Demon's blocking her faith. Go now. Go, you liar. Come out right now. Come out. I bind your power. Go. Come out, you devil. Come out. Anxiety about the future. Anxiety about sharing the word of God. Come out. Her steps are ordained by the Lord. Come out, you devil. Come out. Keep coming out. Go. Come out. Come out, you fire. Come out, you devil. Come out. Come out. I bind you. Come out of this man right now. Generational pervert spirits, come out right now. Spirits from the party. Spirits from the party and the drinking and the smoking. Come out now. Come out. Go. 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 Don't stop those coughs, sir. That's them coming out. Go. Come out faster. Come out faster. Come out faster. Come out faster. Demons that say she's not good enough. You come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Spirit of performance. She's loved just as she is. She's loved and embraced by God right now. Take your hands off her, devil. Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Take a big breath. Go. Go. Come out. Come out, you spirit. Taking, taking blessings. Come out. You blessing stealer. Come out right now. You prosperity stealer. Come out right now. Go. Go. Keep fighting for you online. Keep going. Keep fighting. Come out. Tell him to go in the name of Jesus. Tell him to go in the name of Jesus. Tell him to go in the name of Jesus. Come out. Let's go in the name of Jesus. Come out. I command the spirit of deafness. Come out now in Jesus' name. The spirit of condemnation. Come out right now. The devil told her she wasn't in line for a blessing, that God was in the distance, not hearing her prayers. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Loose those ears. 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 Loose them in Jesus' name. Come out. I bind the spirit of deafness in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of hearing loss in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of condemnation, loneliness, come out, loneliness, broken heart, I break you in the name of Jesus, broken heart, come out, take a big breath, big breath, real big, go, let her go devil, keep coming out, keep fighting, come out right now in the name of Jesus, come out now, you condemn her, he is good enough, come out, he is loved, come out Come out, devil. Go. Keep going. Come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out, you devil. Come out. Sickness and disease come out of the woman of God. Sickness and disease come out. Diabetes come out right now. Diabetes. Demons in the endocrine system come out right now. Generational witchcraft and Catholicism. The worship of idols come out right now. Go right now in Jesus' name. Go out right now in Jesus' name. Come out. I bind, your, I bind the power of every man that transferred a spirit. The transfer spirits from men that abused her sexually and emotionally and physically. Come out now. The spirit of the men. Come out right now. The spirit of the men and the past lovers and past husbands. Come out. Go. 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 You go now, Satan. You go now. You go now. Spiritual laziness. Come out. Spiritual laziness. You come out now. Devil, you're coming out of them right now. 
Come out right now. We bind your power. Speak to the devils. The Lord says yes. Get out of me right now. Take a big breath. I submit to you, Lord. Take a big breath, sir. Take a big breath. Just let him go. Just a few big breaths. Listen to me. You'll get delivered. Take a few big breaths. Come out, devil. Anxiety about the future. Anxiety about finances. Come out right now. Anxiety about money. Come out. The Lord already says yes. Just relax. Come out, devil. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. He's right there. Take a big cough. Just by faith. Release that thing. Go. That's a baby cough. Release that spirit. Release that spirit. Come out, devil. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Sir, you're going to praise God for the rest of your life. Get that thing out of you first. Get that thing out of you. You've got to leave my body. Shame and guilt. I command you to take your hands off this woman of God right now, devil. I command anxiety about the future. Anxiety about relationships. Anxiety about children. I loosen and tie every demonic stronghold that's attached to her emotions in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. I command you to let her go right now. Fear, fear of not being good enough, fear of not prospering, fear of not being loved, fear of not having the desires of her heart. Come out, witchcraft. Come out. I bind you. Come out. Come out now. Come out faster. Come out faster. Come out faster. Come out faster. Come out. Loose that loosen coil. Come out. Kundalini spirits, come out of that spine. Kundalini, come out right now. Kundalini and false holy ghosts, come out right now. False anointings, false words, come out right now. Come out, come out. Just release, take a big breath, that thing on your spine will release. Come out, come out, fear. Come out now, come out now, come out now. Just release it, come out now. Come out right now, come out right now. There it is, go. Come out right now, go. Faster, go out faster. Don't stop those coughs, sister, that's them. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Fear, anxiety, and loneliness, come out. Broken heart, betrayed from lovers. Come out, go, go, go hard. Keep coming out of his anointing. Loose his anointing to preach. Loose his anointing to teach. Loose his passion. Loose him now. Loose him now. Loose him now. Loose him now. Keep coming out of this woman of God. Keep coming out of this woman of God now. Come out. Spirits of sickness, come out. Spirits of diseases, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out, come out. Spirits in the kidneys and the liver, come out. Spirits in the kidneys and the liver, come out. Come out. Demons in the heart and the lungs, the pancreas, come out. Come out. Take a big breath. Just release those spirits. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' fear of not being healed, come out. Toxins and poisons, come out. Po toxins and poisons, come out. There he is. Toxins and poisons, come out. Come out. Toxins and poisons, come out. Toxins and poisons, come out now. Toxins and poisons, come out now. Go. Toxins and poisons, come out. Cancer, come out. Come out. Keep going. Go. Go. Cancers, go. Cancers and poisons, go. Cancers and poisons, go. There he is. Go. I command you to take your hands off this woman of God right now in Jesus' holy name. I break every word curse ever spoken over her. Spirits. They use people to speak discouragements, distractions, lies. I break and loose you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. She is loved by God and called by God. She is highly favored of the Lord. She is being sanctified through the shedding blood, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Come out, you condemning spirit, come out. You condemning spirit, come out. Come out, keep coming out. Condemning spirit, come out. Condemning spirits that have lies attached in her mind, come out. I loose those lines, those lies. Go, go. Go, that's them. That's them right there. There's some more tissue. Keep going. Come out. Come out. Lies that are attached to her mind by spirits. Come out. I break the word curses right now. I break the condemnation right now in the name of Jesus. I break the spirit of I'm not good enough. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Go out more of you. Go out of the mind. 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 Go out of the mind right now in Jesus' name. Go out of the heart and mind. Come out. In Jesus' name, go, go, go. Loose that body and mind. Go, go out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go more. Loose that hold. Loose that hold, Satan. Loose the hold. Come out. Come out all the way from the root. Keep going. That's them coming out. Come out. The devil of performance. Just relax here, sir. You're loved by God. You're a man of God. You got faith in God. He's been lying to you. 
I command that devouring spirit. You got money problems? Okay, you got a relational problems? Oh, okay. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you that you forgive us of our sexual immorality and perversion, Lord. That's a problem, Lord. That's a problem that'll separate us. The devil comes in with condemnation. I know that trick of the devil, and I hate that trick. That trick's exposed by the light. We renounce it right now. We surrender. We die to ourselves as sexual, promiscuous, and voyeuristic. We die to ourselves right now in the name of Jesus. Devil, we declare you can't hold on. We're a dead man. That man is part of us is dead. I bind and loose that spirit. We repent of it right now in Jesus' name. We repent and turn to you, Lord. We know that you make all things new. Thank you, Jesus. I bind the shame and condemnation of the poor self-worth that led him to that viewer, that voyeurism. Come out right now. Condemnation and poor self-worth. Come out. You're the one that led him to that manifestation of pornography. Come out right now. Strippers, come out right now. Transfer spirits with past lovers. Come out right now. Demons that came in when we was little watching Playboy. Come out right now. Demons from HBO, come out right now. You set the stage for this destruction. Come out right now. I bind you from the root. I command you to uproot yourself right now in Jesus' name. I command you to uproot yourself. You're condemning him right now. You're condemning him and accusing him. I break you right now. Come out right now. Come out. He's loved by God. He's loved by God. Let him go, you condemning spirit. Let him go right now. Let him go right now. Take a big cough right there. Start loosening him up. By faith. Keep coming out, devil. You come out of there. Come out of there. Condemning spirit, the poor self-worth, the childhood wounds of rejection. Come out right now. Come out right now. We forgive our mother and father. We forgive those people that accused us. We forgive those ministry leaders that let us down, that didn't appreciate us, that didn't nurture us. We forgive them right now. Forgive those people and those things will flow right out of you, sir. Let's go, you lying devil. In the name of Jesus. Keep going. YouTubers, keep going. I bind every devil of everyone watching on the internet in the name of Jesus. I bind you. I loose you. I command you. Let my people go. Thus saith the Lord. Come out, you devil. Come out fear of not having a good family. Fear of not having the nurturing and the blessing from her children and from her husband. Fear of not having God in the center of her household and the prosperity and the favor of God. I bind and loose you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. You're causing sickness. You're causing infirmities in that body. You're causing sickness and infirmity in that body, and I bind you right now. I bind you from her and her children. I bind you from her family right now. I loose you right now. I command you, come out. I command you to come out. Come out. Come out, sickness. Come out. Come up out of her endocrine system. Come up out of her organs. Come up out of her mind and will and emotions. Come out. Pain in the body. Pain in the soul. Come out. Pain in the body. Come out. Pain in the soul. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out. You go faster, devil. You loose those holes. Loose her throat. Loose her throat. Come out faster. Come out. Hey, if you're here and, and, and you need a breakthrough and you're not getting delivered right now, just come to the front. If you're getting deliverance, just keep going. Keep going through self-deliverance. Come out, devil. Come out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come out of there. Come out. Go. We call you out. Come out. Come out, <laughs> sexual pervert, you come out. Party spirits, come out right now, pervert. Pervert, you come out of there now. Come out, let's go, devil. Spirits of perversion must go in Jesus' name. Spirits of perversion must go in Jesus' name. I pray for this woman right now, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We forgive those men that hurt her. We forgive them, Lord. We forgive those women. They, back, they were backbiting. They were gossiping. They played as friends, but then they betrayed her. We forgive her right, right now. We forgive those women in Jesus' name. I command the pain in her soul to leave right now. I command the pain in her soul to leave right now. I command anxiety and fear about the future to leave right now. I command the anxiety and fear about relationships to come out right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out now, devil. You will lose her right now. Take a big breath. Just start letting those spirits come out. Take a big breath. Big that's a little breath. Big breath. Come out, devil. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Just release those people right now. Release that man. You're carrying him around for 20 years. Just release him right now. Go. You will come out from the root. Satan, 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 you will come out now. Pain in her soul. You will come out. Fight him now, sister. You're getting delivered. Come out right now. Pain in her soul from abusers. Come out right now. Painted her soul from men that betrayed her and let her down, left her alone. Come out right now. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. 
Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Take a big cough. It'll start coming right out of you. Go, devil. Big cough it out. Just take a couple coughs. Just listen to me. I know what I'm doing. Come on. He's trying to clam me up. He wants to stay in here. Come on. Big cough. Come on. Go. Go out, Satan. Go out. There they go. Go out, you liar. Go out. Evil. Evil. Rebellion and hurt. Pain. Come out. Here, hold this. Go. Go. Come out. Pain in the soul. Come out now. Pain in the soul from men. Come out. Come out. Evil and hatred. Come out now. Evil and hatred. Come out right now. Unforgiveness. You come out of her now. Loose her now. Loose her now. Loose her now, devil. Loose her now. From the root. Go. From the root. Sir, stand up here, man. I'm going to turn this mic off. Streamers, keep going. Just keep going, streamers, in the name of Jesus. Keep casting those devils out. Keep fighting in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay.
Keep going, streamers. Keep fighting in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. You're guaranteed if you fight, God will give you the victory. But if you shrink back, God takes no delight in your shrinking back. You've got to press on. You've got to fight. Begin to forgive yourself. Begin to forgive those people that God's putting on your heart. Repent. You got some drug paraphernalia? Begin to throw it in the trash. Flush the drugs down the toilet. Begin to discontinue your memberships to the internet porn. Separate yourself from sin and you'll have authority to cast it out. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God.